Welcome to Essential Style. In this video, we're going to be discussing why the Clark's Desert Boot is one of the best purchases a guy can buy when he is just starting off wearing more stylish, sophisticated leather shoes or boots. What can I say about the Clark's Desert Boot that hasn't already been said? This is my third pair of the Clark's Desert Boot in the beeswax leather. You can see it's still relatively new. Wore through my first two pairs of it and I just keep coming back to the boot. I just find it very easy to wear, very effortless compared to some of my other shoes that I have and other shoes that are out there. Much, much more affordable. I also have it in this dark tan leather as well. It dresses up a little bit better. You can see this one is a little bit more worn, maybe like got halfway the life through it. But overall, it's a great boot and it's a great first boot for you guys to buy. Compared to other options out there like leather shoes or leather boots, this is much, much more affordable. Although it's not cheap by any means, it used to be $130. Recently, they got a price hike to $150. Not much, but it's still worth mentioning. So again, you could probably find something cheaper than this, but for the price for what you're getting, this is still a great value, and it can really run nose and nose with some of the more expensive options out there, like the Red Wing Iron Ranger or anything from Allen Edmonds, for example. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to get your hands on one of these when you have to shell out only $150. Also, it's available on Amazon and Zappos.com, which makes it readily accessible for anyone that wants to just give these a shot. Second point is gonna be durability. So for what you're getting for $150 is a boot that's gonna last you probably about two or three years, depending on how much you walk. These are fairly new, really got no mileage at all on them, probably only walked collectively 10 miles. These are only a few weeks old. These are probably about a year old, year and a half. I've walked quite a bit in these. I don't rely on one pair of shoes for everything. Still got a little bit of tread left. When this gets worn out, you'll see it looks very slick and it'll just like be very reflective. That's kind of when I decide to replace mine, but still got a good bit of life in these. They're nice and broken in. You can see you got some of the age in the leather, but for what you're getting guys is a boot that is not gonna fall apart on you after a few months. Even if you're walking a lot, like doing heavy duty walking, you're still probably gonna get a good solid six months out of these boots. And I'm talking like walking 10 plus miles a day, which any shoe you're gonna be burning through regardless. But this crepe leather sole, it's very squishy, but it does wear super well. When I got my first pair of these years and years ago, I didn't think they were gonna be very durable, but they proved to wear like iron and it just keeps on going. So durability, amazing. So the crepe sole, very, very durable. It is pretty soft. I thought it would wear out fairly quickly, but it actually wears pretty well. The leather quality, these are fairly new, so it's gonna be kind of hard to tell. Any shoe's gonna look good when it's new. This one you could see over a year old, lots of miles in this already. This is what it's gonna look like. So they are gonna age pretty well. The right boot on the dark tan leather has got a little bit more wear in it, a couple of dings and scuffs. And by the way, these shoes I've only polished twice, and that was just to kind of condition them. And I think of it like a pair of jeans. The more worn and torn they get, the better they look, and the more character they have. Durability is great. Next point we're gonna talk about is familiarity. If you've never worn leather dress shoes or leather dress boots before, there is a period of adaption you're gonna to wanna to take when going from something like a pair of sneakers to a pair of dress shoes or dress boots with that stiff leather sole, doesn't have a lot of cushioning. Not the case with these. A lot of cushioning in them, very flexible, not a lot of support. However, very, very comfortable, very cushiony, and it's not gonna be worlds apart if you've been wearing a sneaker like a pair of Asics, Nike, Adidas, or whatever is out there. So these do require almost no break-in. That's not to say that there's the break-in totally non-existent. They're gonna be a bit stiff and not as cushy at first. Once your foot kind of makes an imprint on the inside of the sole and the inside of the boot, and then once the boot kind of just breaks into all the points where your ankle is and everything like that, it's just gonna make it even more comfortable. But by no means do you need to go through a painful break-in process like some of the other boots out there. You can pretty much just put these on your feet and start walking. That's what I do all the time. There again, when I first got these as a pair to these, these are gonna feel a lot better, like they're mine. The break-in's pretty much super easy. Also the last of them too, or the shape of them, nice and wide. It's not gonna cram your toes together. It's a very loose, free-flowing feeling boot. It really just allows your foot to just kind of move as, at its free will. The last of the shape of the boot is kind of wide as well, so it's not gonna be cramming your toes together like some of the other nicer shoes out there that you may find. Just the way the shoe moves with you, where it pretty much just allows your foot to move very freely and doesn't 
it's not fighting your foot it's not closing your foot into like this weird position and weird kind of like enclosed space where your foot just like i said where you're cramming your toes together or your foot is just hurting by the end of the day the next point is going to be versatility these boots are incredibly versatile. I've worn these with shorts all the way up to jeans or khakis with a sport coat and a shirt, similar to what I have on right now. While they aren't the best in any situation, there's not a lot of shoes out there that you're gonna be able to get that type of versatility out of and wear them in all of those multiple types of situations. And with being versatile, they can act as an anchor to your outfit if you got a lot of loud colors or big busy patterns going on on top or if you're wearing some crazy red pants for example but if you dress in muted colors similar to what i do they can kind of stand out a little bit and then just give your outfit a little bit more character and a little bit more pop depending on your other colors this particular color the dark tan leather is probably going to pop a little bit better but because it is a little bit more or a lot more shiny and a lot more polished up it is going to be a little bit more formal than this one. However, while this is going to be more formal, it's also going to stand out more than the classic beeswax leather. Especially as time goes on, this is going to get very, very dirty, similar to this, which means that that outsole is not going to jump out at you for attention anymore. So the beeswax one does have more of like a, a work boot aesthetic, where it just kind of looks like a nicer, sleeker version of like your Red Wing Iron Ranger Wolverine 1000 Mile type, whereas the dark tan leather does look a little bit more dressy. There's also suede options as well, which would work in the spring and summer. Suede's kind of something I've never really dabbled in. I always just prefer the leather, but suede's a nice option. A lot of the guys like the lighter colored tan. They also have the dark brown suede, which I think is, would be crazy versatile. Just a lot of options as far as colors. All right, so with all that being said, if you decided you're gonna pick up a pair of these to start off with, there are gonna be some concerns before you just put this on and start walking and think you're gonna have no issues at all. So if you've never worn sneakers with no support anymore, I'm talking you've always worn your work boots, you've always worn your Adidas, your A6, your running shoe types, or something with an insert, these are going to be a little bit foreign to you because there is no arch support inside these boots. It's flexible, it's comfortable, it moves with you, but you can literally feel that inside does not touch the arch. It does not conform to your arch at all your feet pretty much are supporting themselves. If you've been wearing Vans old schools or Vans slip-ons or Converse or anything like that, those minimal canvas sneakers, whereas those shoes lack cushioning and support and more of like a glorified sock type, this is gonna be no support, but a lot of cushioning and just a little bit more, not support, maybe a little bit more support around your ankle initially, but they do kind of get pretty flimsy, which just, double-edged sword. It makes them more comfortable, but less supportive. So as it goes with any new shoe that you get, you should ease into walking with them, start wearing them around the house, then maybe just taking the garbage out. If you've got a dog, take the dog for a walk, walk to the grocery store, do a few errands in them. That way, if they do start to hurt your feet, you don't have to worry about you've got seven more miles to walk all over the place and your feet are already hurting. It's not gonna be a good time. You're not gonna enjoy these boots. Definitely ease into them, especially if you're not used to wearing something that has no support. And that no support, while it is very comfortable for me because I'm used to them, it does take a little bit of time getting used to. There was a blog out there called Iron and Tweed by the author named Nate, and he wrote that when he first laced up his desert boots, it felt like he was gonna step right out of them because they're just very, it feels like there's no support at all, but it does take a little bit of time to get used to that loose feeling of the shoe just feels like it's gonna fly off your feet at any moment. Again, it's gonna, it's on your foot, it's gonna stay on your foot, but it doesn't feel as stable as a higher work boot that laces up all over really tight around your ankle. So definitely just take some time to get used to that. Beware that the crepe sole is gonna change color. It's gonna start off looking like this, but then it's going to end up looking like this the point where it could just look super dark all around and you're not even gonna be able to tell that it was a lighter color at one point. You do have this sort of welt or this tan line that does kind of even everything out so that you can still tell it, it still keeps that relative look. But as time goes on, you're not gonna, all you're gonna see is that little line right there. You're not gonna be able to see this all pretty much is gonna turn a darker color. So that is gonna happen as the boot ages. It doesn't, it takes a little while to happen, but you'd be aware of that. It's gonna change as time goes on where you might be able to dress them up a little bit more when this isn't dirty, but once this does get dirty, that's it. No turning back, they're more of a casual only boot. And once it gets dirty, you can't clean it. The crepe sole absorbs that dirt into the material and you can't just clean it off the surface like you could a pair of Vans. And that's just something to keep in mind because once it gets dirty, there's no going back. Now that being said, with the dark tan ones, the bottoms, because they got a little bit darker, 
it's kind of hard to tell unless you're really studying if someone's really sitting there studying your shoes from far away from about here they do still look pretty dressy it really just depends on more of the upper of the shoe and the dark tan leather can be dressed up a little bit more similar to the dark brown suede the dark brown suede has a dark brown sole so you know you pretty much don't have to worry about that that is something to keep in mind the crepe sole do get dirty some people don't like it some people do doesn't bother some people really enjoy it i fall into that camp of i kind of like it i like the way this one looks better than this one but i don't want it to get much dirty so i like when it's kind of like that half and half type it's not super brand new anymore but it has got some good wear in it and when they get too dark it starts to look pretty rough overall though i do like the slightly worn in look so thanks so much for stopping by today that's the clark desert boots and some of the reasons why it's a great starter boot for a lot of guys out there and even a guy like me who's been in his style journey for more than a couple of years now it's still something i fall back on when i just want something that i don't have to think about and it's going to match with multiple outfits and multiple situations the only time you really can't wear this is when you want to dress up with a suit or if it's raining hard or if it's super cold but in the summertime spring fall great boot very familiar very easy to wear and just overall overall staple in my wardrobe so thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something and as always i'll see you in the next one have a good one guys Stay safe. Bye.